Good morning. I want to talk to you today about the products. There seems to be a little bit of confusion what they all do. Um, let's start out with the, the root keeper is your root inoculant. You should be using that early on and use that all through the season every two to three weeks. Some of you may prefer just to add a little bit here and there maybe once a week but you need to continue to throw your mycorrhiza on the plant because you're going to kill it with pesticides and insecticides. Plus it's 20% humic acid. Keep that in mind. Humic acid helps the plant take in more nutrients. So when you're jacking up your fertilizers and you're using a root keeper, it's going to take in more nutrients. So if you get crazy with your fertilizers, you might burn your plant. And the root keeper will help you burn your plant because it's going to help the plant take in more nutrients. That's what humic acid does. All right. Now the grow the grow is for the early stages of the plant up until fruiting when you need more nitrogen. The grow has everything in it the plant needs, your, all your micros and macros, most everything it needs, all right? So it's a balance. Now, you want to use the grow, and then we'll switch to the bloom when we get to the fruiting stage, which I'm there now with my pumpkin I pollinated yesterday, and being how my tissue test told me that I'm jacked with nitrogen, the bloom has less nitrogen, but still has all the macros and micros the plant needs. So, I shouldn't say all, most, because you're going to have imbalances. Everybody's going to be a little more imbalanced, or unless you're perfectly tweaked in, which is rare. So, that's why we have the other products, the CalMag, for the additional boost of calcium and magnesium. But with the CalMag, it's only 2% magnesium. You also need to do Epsom salts drenches every seven to ten days one tablespoon of epsom salts per gallon you can go down to one teaspoon if you like but additional magnesium sulfur is needed for these plants these plants being outside everything leaches off there's a huge need for this all right so then that's what the calmag does now pumpkin power that's another pumpkin power is the additional phosphorus and potassium that you're going to need when this pumpkin is packing on 20 to 40 pounds a day. A tissue test is a great way to go. You don't have to do it. If you're just growing out in the field, as your pumpkins get bigger, a couple hundred pounds, it's time to start using the pumpkin power. Even if you're, if you're growing a 500 pounder, when you get to the 80 pound mark on the pumpkin, it's time to start using the additional potassium and phosphorus. All right. Now, there is no exact PPM I can give you. If I give everybody a PPM program, follow this recipe, some of you would just crash and burn because your soil is so hot and jacked. You wouldn't need all that fertility. Others would be lean. That's why the feeding schedule I have given you is a mild feeding. If your plants are light and green and looking needy, double the feeding formula I have on there. All right? And you're going to have to make adjustments, feed and read. I'm looking. I'm getting scorched leaves right now in Michigan. Here we go. I'm on my little, my little walkers. Scorched leaves. They're getting too hot in here. I'm going to hang, hang some shade cloth today. And what I'm doing is I'm not fertilizing. The last couple times I just watered. The next couple times I'm going to continue to water uh, because I think I have too much fertility in the soil. The salts need to be flushed out, which will take three or four waterings to flush them out. Here's a scorched leaf. It breaks my heart to see a scorched leaf. And I'm going to come in here today. See, it's melting around the edge. That's heat. Heat and combination of nutrients, I believe. Uh, the salt in the soil from the nutrients. So we're going to cut back. I'm going to hang some shade cloth today. I'm going to run some shade cloth down here because the next three days it's going to get hotter and hotter. It's going to be 94 degrees in here on Sunday. And I have a graduation open house to go to. So... I got a friend who's going to come by and mist them down for me. But uh, the shade cloth's going up today, man. I'm going to hang a strip down here and a strip down here and try to protect this new growth. I hate to lose this beautiful plant to a little hot spell. I got a feeling it's going to be a hot summer. I hope I'm wrong because that will be a battle. If we're in the 90s all summer, it will be a battle to get another 2,000 pounder. Here's another scorcher right here. All right, man. I'm rambling on, but there you go. The... The fertilizers, I try to explain them the best I can. Um, I try to make a video mixing the nutrients, although I'm not going to be using the nutrients for a while. I'm flushing my soil. Um, you don't have to have that pedal to the metal. You don't have to feed every day. You can water. An occasional water is good. 
I just added my Bubba meters too. Here's my Bubba meters, my Bubba soil meters. I'm adding these in kind of late. So I took a jar of Mark's mixes, an unlabeled jar, and I buried it in the soil. So it's not packed down yet. It needs to rain or get watered a few times. I'll pull this out of the ground and check my soil moisture later in the game. Bubba's moisture meter. All right, man. We'll talk soon and say hello to tiny bubbles. I will keep her shaded so the hot sun doesn't cause an abort. I've already set up Bubba's dirty bags with a pile of dirt for the pumpkin to lay on. We'll talk more about this later. All right? Keep it a secret. And don't tell everybody about Bubba's dirty bags.